What's up guys, this is Lee Rosa. Thank you so much for checking into my YouTube channel. If you like what you see today, please like, subscribe, and uh, pass it along, share it to any of your friends. Today we're gonna dive into eight reasons why real estate agents fail and uh, dive into all the different kind of nuances and things that I've experienced over the years. Again, my name, Lee Rosa. I've been in the business 19 years and uh, help agents build, grow, successful, profitable real estate business. So let's get into number one. Agents wait for repeat and referral business. Agents wait for repeat and referral business. That is the number one reason why agents will fail. So if you look at this as there are two types of people in the world, there are people who you know and there are people who you don't know. The list of people who you don't know is far greater than the people that you know. I mean, that's just kind of common sense. So if the people who you know are not ready, willing, and able to do business for whatever reason, then the next logical step would be to start speaking to people that you don't know. And we would do that through so many different varieties of modes of generating opportunities with the number one reason that agents fail is simply that they're waiting for people who they know uh, to do business with them. And that is absolutely a great way to run a fun, exciting uh, uh, real estate business, but waiting for that uh, business is probably the number one reason why agents fail. The second reason why agents fail flows from the first, which is uh, agents don't build a consistent business. So they wait for business, kind of like sitting by the phone, staring, going, hey, um, please call me today, v versus consistently following a schedule and having new business searching part of their routine. So part of building a routine is following a schedule. And uh, it, you know, being in the business as long as I have, uh, one of the reasons that uh, agents get into the business is for the flexibility, and the flexibility is exactly part of the reason that they don't succeed. So following a morning routine is absolutely one of the key principles of agents who succeed at the highest level. And even those that are highly successful, when their business flounders or starts to slow down, the first lever they can pull is getting back to a consistent morning routine and having lead generation, generating new business and setting appointments part of that number two. So again, number one is waiting and praying that they're going to have business. And then number two is not generating business consistently. Reason number three that most agents fail is because they don't qualify leads. They don't learn the skill of qualification. They work with anyone with a pulse and they don't have a definition of what their avatar is of who they should and want to work with. So one way of looking at this is um, having a very clear definition of what a uh, qualified lead is uh, so that they can ask questions and work towards working for that person. So let's give an example. Um, someone who is qualified that they are ready, willing, and able they want to work with me and they're looking to do business in the next 100 days. Now, that's a very clear avatar. Now, that doesn't mean that someone who doesn't check off all those boxes isn't someone that we want to communicate with, talk to, uh, be in business with. It simply means that we're working with people who aren't ready, willing, and able and then wonder why we're not moving the lever of appointments to contracts to uh, closing. So when we work with unmotivated and unqualified people, this business gets very frustrating because they aren't willing to do what 
the market may dictate for them to have to do to succeed. And so learning the skill of qualification is absolutely one of the most important pieces, which is why it made the list. Number four is a continuation of that. We don't qualify our appointments. There's nothing more frustrating than working with unqualified people. Now, what does that mean? Well, so if somebody says, hey, I want to sell my condo, but I won't go below this price, and all the comparables are under that price, and the market is adjusting downward because there's a very low absorption rate, and the month's supply of inventory is well into a buyer's market, well, that's time and that's energy. That very well is just going to spin or donut around in circles. So number five, taking overpriced listings. These are all piecing together because an overpriced listing in a market that we're going into, 2025, is simply a waste of time, money, resources, and energy. Now, why do I say that? Because when a market is going up, if you price it high, the market will eventually catch it. Well, if the market value is here and the seller wants to price it here, well, we're never going to catch it when a market is going down. It's You're always going to chase it and that's frustrating because the seller will blame you and it's simply an opportunity for an agent to help the seller self-discover that time is not on their side when listing a property. So taking overpriced listings leads to expired listings and it's a great opportunity for the skilled agents to take advantage. One of my favorite sayings I learned at the beginning of my career was simply, you want to be the firstborn, second spouse, third realtor. Because agents who don't understand how to price property, how to work with the right folks in an adjusting market, those that have the skill take all of the opportunities, close more business, and run a profitable business when all other agents are frustrated. So number six is that they spend too much time on the things that don't matter. So if we were to think of what are the most important tools or the most important activities that a real estate agent should be leveraging, it's simply five things. Number one, practice and role play. Get really good and comfortable in what to say. Number two, generate leads. Meaning, speak to people who you don't know or speak to your sphere and warn them to do business. Number three, follow up. 80% of our appointments should come from follow up. So we generate leads. They may not be ready. Then we follow up to schedule appointments. Number four, we go on appointments. And number five, we negotiate contracts. So these are the five activities that an agent should spend 80% of their day doing. So the reason that spending too much time on the other things is number six is simply if you spend 80% of your day doing these five activities, practice, generate new business, follow up, go on appointments, and negotiate contracts. If you do that for six hours or 80% of an eight-hour day, magic will happen. The consistency is in doing the right activities. And so when it comes to marketing property, really the best marketing is simply taking a saleable listing, pricing it right, selling it quick, tell the whole world you sold it, and do it over and over and over again. Number seven as why most agents fail. It's because they don't understand or have a relationship with their numbers. I learned a long time ago that 
Real estate agents make this business very emotional. It's so tough. I speak to so many people. I've gone on so many appointments. And yet when you are very clear in your numbers, hey, I speak to 100 people, I schedule an appointment, every two appointments I go on, I take a listing, and every two listings I take, I sell. Well, hey, how fast can we talk to 400 people so that I can start bringing money into my business? Knowing your numbers is absolutely one of the most important levers that we can pull as professional real estate agents so that we can get better and be coached to reach our potential and exceed what is possible. So let's think about it another way. If we know how many conversations we need to have to schedule an appointment, that's bliss. If we know that Um, we have deals that are not closing, meaning dead deals, buyer and seller have agreed on terms and the deal doesn't close. Well, if we see that we have transactions that are blowing up, we could be coached on bulletproofing. There's so much awesomeness that can come from knowing your numbers that you can not only be coached, but you can grow. So let's bookend this one. What you track, you can improve. What you track and report, you can exponentially improve. So why not track your numbers so you know where you are? There's no sporting team that runs a professional gig that doesn't have a scoreboard. Real estate agents who do not track their numbers run a vulnerable business to be susceptible to a changing market. When we track our numbers, we can get ahead of whatever changes are coming in the market because our numbers start to change and we can start to go, oh, shoot. And we can get ahead of whatever the changes are versus being vulnerable to the changes in the market. I hope that one made sense. And number eight, no plan, no accountability, and no structure. The best agents have all three. They have a plan. They have accountability partners and or a coach, and they have structure. They have a business plan, they follow business models, they follow a schedule, and they execute every single day because they are accountable to their goals and what achieving their goals can do for them. Building a sound business on hitting each one of these points is absolutely vital to the growth and maturity of your business. So let's dive into that last point real fast. A plan. We're going into quarter four when I'm recording this. There should be a plan for the quarter. Well, hey, what about New Year's in October? Because if real estate is a 100-day cycle, it means October 1 is really setting up January. So when you think of business plans, think of we want an annual plan. We want a halfway through the year plan to see exactly where we are in relation. And then we want a Q4 plan. This is going to bring us clarity. It's going to allow us to have places where we can hit these milestones and know if we're on track or not. And it allows us to be accountable to what the plan looks like. Accountability partners is one of the most important pieces to the maturation of a real estate agent. I remember back at the beginning of my career, the accountability partners that I was accountable to and they were accountable to me are still some of my friends today. Throughout the years, you will find those that are accountable and you will band together because there's so many real estate agents who just aren't accountable to themselves, their goals, and their dreams, why they got into this business. So when you find the ones that will, hold on to them, communicate with them, and help them no matter the company that they're in. And structure. That's simply having a model. So we have a plan and we have a model. And a model is simply borrowing the best thinking. We borrow models for all aspects of our business. So think of lead generation, 
follow-up, and transaction management. The structure is simply what is the best model for the different ways that I'm going to generate leads? What is the best model for how I'm going to follow up with everyone inside my world? What is the best model for everything we do the moment someone says, I want to buy or I want to sell? That could be how we qualify a buyer, how we qualify a seller, how we do a listing presentation, a buyer consultation, how we write offers, how we present offers, how we negotiate offers, show homes, contract to close for buyers, contract to close for sellers, generating referrals. These all have models and I encourage you to build structure based on proven models. Then you add creativity on top of the model so that it becomes more you. But warning, if you have a business built all on creativity, it will work in an appreciating market. Yet, when a market adjusts or starts to get wavy, a market built on creativity or a, a business built on creativity, think of a triangle upside down. The triangle simply has no foundation. So models are your foundation. And then we build creativity at the top of this example. The best agents have all three. So I hope that with this quick little lesson that the eight reasons why agents fail resonates with you. I'd love to go deeper on each one with you. If you want to comment below, uh, let me know which one's your favorite. If you'd like to schedule a one-on-one -on -one to discuss which ones might be opportunities for you to improve, don't hesitate. I'll have all the links below for you to schedule time. Thanks for watching. And again, if you like, subscribe. If you really, really like it, pass it along. Hit that comment button. Hit that like button. Thanks for watching. Again, this is Coach Lee Rosa. Have a great day.